week's episode of the Good Gram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, um, so as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, commented and all that kind of stuff. Um, before we start, a quick update on my bottling. Uh, I'm expecting it to be delivered, well I know it's going to be delivered uh, uh, next week um, into our bonded warehouse, so hopefully they'll process it fairly quickly and uh, I may well have uh, have it here for you uh, you guys uh, next week uh, failing that it will certainly be the week after that um, so it's getting close and I'm, I'm really excited about this so uh, um, but anyway enough about that uh, let's uh, talk about uh, to today's um, today's lineup um, so as you can see from the the title page we're looking at uh, Paul John and um, why not? Um, it's been a while since I did the last episode uh, on Paul John. I think it was about two years in actual fact. And um, part of the reason uh, I wanted to do another episode of the show is that I love their whiskey. I think their whiskey is absolutely brilliant. Um, I think the brilliance is just so aptly named, uh, it has to be said. Um, and... Obviously, sort of a couple of months ago, um, uh, Shilton kindly came along and uh, did one of our, our, our whiskey evenings and um, showcased the range, and uh, we had a had a bloody good night, shall we say? So, um, fortunately, I was able to uh, to snaffle some of the uh, some of the liquid, and I thought, let's do an episode of the show. Um, so I've got the core range. Um, I've also, as you well know, been rummaging in boxes and discovered that uh, back in um, 2015, uh, I tasted uh, two single cask bottlings uh, for the whiskey magazine. I guess they're probably, they may or may not be still available, um, but I thought it would be really nice to um, have an absolute shitload of Paul John to taste. So um, anyway, Coming back to the um, the title page, uh, you'll probably notice it is quite plain by my usual standards, and that's because I wanted to sort of focus uh, your attention to to the stills uh, at Paul John. Now, as you can see, they're 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 fairly sort of substantial, but they're 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 squat. I mean, you know, we're not talking Glenfiddich sort of style. Um, tall necked jobbies here. Um, I mean, although they they obviously have shell and tube cond condensers uh, and fairly steeply angled lin arms, there's you know, and yes, I imagine that it's a very slow distillation. But even so, uh, copper contact there is going to be well, I wouldn't say minimal, but it's not going to be a huge copper content uh, contact and. Uh, the resulting spirit is obviously going to be fairly rich, um, probably a little bit sulfury, and um, quite robust. And when you think about it, there's absolutely no point in producing a nice, light, feminine, effete, uh, delicate spirit in India, because it's going to get hammered by the oak. I mean, you know, if you've got this sort of like airy, fairy spirit um, and... Um, ain't going to come out of the oak with any surviving amount of character whatsoever. Um, and why, why do I say that? Well, basically, India is hot. Doesn't take a genius to figure that one out, even though the distillery is uh, um, situated in Goa by the coast, so it's going to have a... It's not going to be as hot as it is sort of inland, but it's still going to be damn hot. And, um, yeah... The distillery could have sort of opted to use um, temperature controlled um, warehouses and all that sort of stuff, but I think basically they thought that, that would go against the grain, sorry, uh, of, of making a proper Indian whiskey. You know, the whiskey needs to experience uh, the environment of, uh, of India, and that basically means it's got to, you know, put up with the heat. Um, and so, you know, when you think about it, Scotland is fairly cold and damp and bloody miserable half the time. Um, and so, you know, your, your angel share is about, you know, one and a half percent, three percent a year. Um, obviously, in India, that is considerably more, somewhere in the region of eight to ten percent per year. So 
A, you can't leave your spirit in the cask very long because essentially it's just going to end up as a pile of sludge at the bottom of the, uh, of the cask. And B, because obviously in a warm environment you are losing so much liquid, you're obviously therefore got a lot more uh, oak surface area to liquid. So therefore the oak character is going to sort of come in quite strongly, quite quickly. And again, you wouldn't want to leave it for much longer than what, what they actually do. So basically your light nice delicate spirit is really going to get hammered by the heat and the oak and and you know so what you want is you want something with the the cojones uh to sort of deal with all of that and you know um knowing the style of, uh, of of paul john that is exactly what they've done they've designed the spirit to you know cope with that kind of extreme uh of um of oak and temperature so so basically, yes, I, I wanted to kind of draw attention to, to the stills because I think obviously, like any distillery, they are a very important part of the creation of the style of, of the whiskey. But in certain circumstances, like uh, in India, I think they are uh, you know, even more important possibly than, than anything else uh, in, the, um, in the process. But anyway... Um, so, uh, as I've got sort of seven samples here to work my way through, I'm going to sort of shut up now and uh, just introduce the lineup. Right, okay, so uh, basically all these are non chill filtered, and uh, I mean, as you can see, when I was talking about the oak, I mean, you know, you look at the colour of that, I mean, you know, uh, and if you didn't know better, you would have thought, is there some sherry in that? I mean, that is a dark whiskey. Um, so anyway, we're going to kick off with the Brilliance, it's bottled at 46%. The sort of standard age of the spirit that they've now kind of got to is between 5 and 7. They think that between 5 and 7 is the ideal sort of point for bottling. So back when they first released um, their spirit, it was obviously a lot younger. But now it's kind of you know settled down to sort of like uh, about sort of 5 to 7. And another thing that I love about the distillery is no sherry right um although they have dabbled with sherry the, the core range thankfully is is pretty much first and second fill american oak so um none of your sulfur horrendously manky sherry casks here thank you very much and even when they do sherry it, it's it's top quality stuff i can tell you i mean i have never tasted a bad bottling from paul john at all uh, segment. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, so the uh, this the brilliance is batch one of 2018, and that's the other nice thing. Individual batches, so you know, it's there's always going to be a little difference, should we say, uh, from batch to batch. Second bottle we'll be looking at is the um, the classic select cask. This is bottled at 55.2. This is batch two of 2017, um, and uh, like I said, so it's it's a selection of casks. Uh, then we're going to look at the first of the two single casks. This is cask number 1444 uh, bottled at 59.7% and like I said I tasted it in January of 2015 so I'm guessing it was probably released at some stage in 2014. Um, next bottling we'll be looking at is the edited again bottled at 46% first and second fill American oak. Now the interesting thing about their use of peat is that obviously peat doesn't grow in India. Well, that's a surprise. Um, so obviously they use imported Scottish peat and interestingly enough they use not only do they use mainland peat they also use isla peat. Now the bold which we will get onto in due course is pretty much 100% isla peat whereas the ed edited which is a vatting of peated and unpeated, uh, is predominantly, or the peated component, should we say, is predominantly from the mainland peat. Um, and that's kind of, I think that's really, really quite interesting. Interesting use of the different types of peat, and hopefully that will show in the final spirit. So because this is a vatting of both peated and unpeated spirit, the edited works out at around about eight to ten parts per million and this is batch one from 2018. Um, the next bottling we'll be looking at is um, the select car uh, no yes it should be the uh, yeah we'll do it that way around um, the peated 
select cask. Um, this is bottled at 55.5% and um, it's petered to about 25 to 30 parts per million. This is batch one from 2018. Uh, then we're going to move on to the bold. Uh, this is batch three from 2018. It's bottled at 46 percent and is petered to roughly about the uh, the same um, as the select cask. And then finally, we'll be looking at the petered single cask. This is cask number 777. Um, I think that has quite a. Um, or I think 777 is quite revered in sort of um, Chinese. Numerology. I don't know whether the same goes for Indian numerology, um, but anyway. So it's uh, cask seven seven seven, uh, bottled at forty nine point two percent, and uh, I tasted this in late uh, late two thousand and fifteen. So again, I imagine it was bottled in two thousand and fourteen or released in two thousand and fourteen. So, so there you go. That's uh, this week's lineup. Let's kick off with some brilliance. Okay. So let's see what. Shall we? Quite rich, quite dense, quite um, malty. Some lovely creamy oak, um, barley. It's got a, a lovely, robust kind of feel, but it has an elegance as well. Um, hints of chocolate, um, rye like spices, which I'm guessing is probably coming from the oak. Um, touch of salt. Citrus, bit of tangerine, orange, um, a little bit of violet. But that's just absolutely fabulously balanced. It's not too oaked. Um, yes, the oak is 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 pretty noticeable and has that lovely creaminess. Um, but it's got a, a, a real robust barley kind of character, you know. Um, and that sort of saltiness is just just sort of cutting through um, and that is just that's just a damn good nose it has to be said so it passed on rich fragrant malty barley Lovely balance again of oak, getting some oak spices, a bit of cinnamon, touch of violets, quite a salty um, finish in actual fact. The oak is probably less noticeable on the palate, it's, it's kind of more adding structure and there's a little bit of vanilla and it's not quite so sort of creamy as it is on the nose. It's probably a little bit more spicy and again I'm getting a slight rye-like spice. Uh, and a bit of grippiness, um, and it, but again, I mean, it's just so well balanced. And considering it's, like I said, it's about five to seven years old, um, it certainly is a little bit more weightier now than I remember it from the very beginning, um, which is yeah, not a bad thing. I mean, it was good back then. It's it's very good now. Um, but on the whole, yeah, I, I'm really well balanced and still really well priced. So. Um, Lovely one to start with, I think. Right, okay, so let's move on to the select cask. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Now, they'll tell you that the select cask is, is more indicative of the, the, the style that they want out of Paul John. It's a little bit more citric than the Brilliance. It's got a, a little bit more tropical fruit, a little bit more sort of apricot. Um, so almost kind of melon, lime, guava. It's got a lovely perfume, a lovely aromatic quality to it. Again, violets, barley, and again, some spicy rye-like notes coming from the oak. Um, oh, it's just got such an incredible intensity. It's a, a little bit of salt as well, some spice. Um, I mean, all round. Dad. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, get, yeah, again a little bit of, of, of almost tropical orange now. Oh, it's just, just a stunning nose, absolutely sensational. I love this nose. Um, 
It's just got so much personality and character and balance and just, just everything that I look for in a whiskey. Um, let's see what passes like. Fuller, maltier, getting more oak impact, more spicy rye like notes, a um, little bit of herbal rye as well. But again, it's got that slight tropical fruit, a um, little bit of citrus, lots of salt on the finish, um, toasty oak. Uh, again, it's just an, an, a lovely malt. And actually, I don't really think it actually needs water. I mean, it's just. The alcohol is kind of enhancing that kind of salty citric finish and it's really kind of leaving the mouth kind of almost tingling and mm, absolutely gorgeous. I will put a little drop of water with it just to see what happens but like I said I don't really, for me personally I think that the, the alcohol is just so nicely integrated. A um, bit more biscuity now, um, still getting the violets. Um, Possibly a little bit more fragrant now, a little bit more barley, less malt. Um, oak is possibly a little bit more nuttier. I mean, it's either way. I mean, you know, with or without water, the nose is is, is absolutely gorgeous. Getting an almost a little smidge of ice cream um, from the uh, from the oak now, but again. Balance, absolutely fabulous. Let's see what the balance like now. Mm, juicy. Mm. Emphasizing the citrus and the and the uh, the salt again. Um, it's fairly similar to the to the nose in actual fact so I'm getting a little bit more nuttiness from the oak a little bit less of the kind of herbally rye spice um, again sort of slightly oily slightly tropical fruit um, touch of melon nice dark spice finish with um, almost peppery notes not quite peppery notes but starting to move in that sort of direction um, Mm. Oh, that's good. Right, okay, uh, so uh, on to the single cask. Uh, this is, like I said, cask 1444, bottled at 59.7%. That's a dense and malty nose. Um, it's kind of like the select cask, but turned up to 11. Um, really herbal, dark spices, again I'm getting a slight sort of bready, not breadiness, biscuitiness, um, it's probably slightly more denser than the, um, the select cask, there. although there is a, a little citric note kind of coming through, a little bit of green apple, apricot, bit of melon, um, but it's 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 a, a real dense multi multi nose, um, and it's just indicative of the style that they're, they're looking to create. Like I said, it just shows the sh the, the short necked stills, the more robust new make. Um, not that I've tasted the new make, but I'm just kind of guessing considering um, the uh, the end product, shall we say? Um, I mean, I'd love to taste some of the new make, but Shilton, if you're watching, I'd love to taste some of the new make. Um, it's it's stunningly deep, absolutely sensational stuff. Um, let's see what pops like. Again, quite malty, barley, dense. 
quite alcoholic in actual fact. I can really taste the alcohol, which is not a surprise considering it's almost 60%. And that's the thing about, obviously, warm environments. You lose uh, liquid, but you retain the alcohol. Um, the, the finish is a little bit masked. It's a little bit bitter, um, getting sort of bitter chocolate, bitter spice. Um, it's got, it is quite dark, quite treacly. Um, and... Um, dry. Um, so let's uh, put a little drop of water with it and see if that opens it out. So let's put the nose like now. Yep. So we're now kind of like more in the style of the, um, the select cask. It's got more citrus, it's become lighter, um, more saltiness. Again, still quite, quite herbal and still get quite getting that sort of herbally rye like character again which I'm guessing is coming from the oak um, and it's a, a little bit calmer now still quite malty but not quite so dark um, it's a sort of more of a lightness of touch to it now so what the parts are Again, quite barley, quite cereally. Um, definitely getting these kind of rye like notes. I'm, and um, I remember when when I tasted this for the whiskey magazine, um, I actually thought this was some kind of multi-grain mash because uh, I'm just getting a lot of rye. Um, obviously, once you know what it is, you kind of like go, oh yeah, okay, the first and second bit of American oak. That's where that kind of character is going to come from. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, the oak is a little bit more powerful uh, on this and, th and, th and I'm guessing that that's fairly indicative of a lot of the casks that they have where you know, the, the oak is going to be quite intense. So will, when they, say, produce the, uh, the brilliance or the edited or what have you, they will, obviously this is why you vat in various aged spirits because you, you want to remove... You want a little bit of younger spirit just to sort of offset some of the more heavier wood character from the older spirit. Um, so that's really impressive. It's still quite salty and quite drying on the finish in actual fact. but um, And I, I really like that. But I think my preference would probably be for the Select Cask bottle. Okay, so um, let's finish with a bit of... Oh, hang on, we're only halfway through. Um, right, okay, so uh, on to the edited. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Now, whenever I smell the edited, it always reminds me of Bamor. Uh, it has that violety, dusty peat. Now, I know, obviously, the peat is more mainland, but I imagine there's probably a little bit of Isle of Peat used. Um because it does have that sort of slight sort of iodine note, but it's 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 quite coffeeed, it's quite dusty and woody uh, on on the peat front. But again, we're not. It's not a huge peat monster. You're still getting the robust barley and malt beneath. Um, I think. I only think there's only about 25% um, peated malt goes into the edited, but it certainly punctures above its weight, it has to be said. Um, a little bit of, of, of orange kind of coming through, a little bit of a little bit of salt. I mean, that's, that, again, is just gorgeous. I mean, it's not hugely peated, but like I said, it's got a, it's got enough peat there to keep you interested. So, um, see what the power's like. Soft, malty, a little bit more oxidised fruit, a little bit more sort of oxidised, macerated, sort of bruised, apple-y kind of fruit. Um, gentler peat, there's a little bit of tar, a little bit of dusty peat. Again, slight violetiness that, that kind of puts you in mind of Bamore on the, on the finish. Um, again, 
touch of citrus. Uh, it is just absolutely classic. It is, you know, you taste the sort of the earlier, the unpeated Paul John, and then you come to this one and you go, oh yeah, hmm, I can see exactly where it's coming from. It's lightly peated Paul John. It's not sort of like a stonking peat monster. Um, it's really wonderfully balanced and um, yeah, spot on. Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, select cask, so bottle of 55.5, let's see what those gives us on this end, shall we? Again, um, quite malty, citric, um, lovely freshness, a little bit of, again, the dusty peat, there's a little bit of iodine, menthol, Possibly a little darker, obviously more intense than the um, uh, than the uh, the edited. Um, obviously more peak character, but again, it's all really well balanced. There's a a little touch of char, a little bit almost a yeah manure, yeah possibly. Mm. Um, but again, it's robust, it's malty, it's kind of standing up to this peak really, really well. And again, it's incredibly well balanced. Let's see what the power's like. Well, that's a real TCP hit on the finish. Um, Again, it has a lightness to it. Um, it has a little bit more citric character. Um, the peat really only tends to sort of really come through on the finish. So I'm getting sort of you know medicinal iodine uh, and dusty peat uh, and woody peat. And again, I'm getting that sort of bamori kind of violet -y aftertaste. Um, I mean, that is absolutely lovely. That's a real intense mouthful. And, spicy salty peaty finish is just like oh that's that's good that's intense um mm, okay we'll um put a, uh, a little drop of water with it and uh, see what happens um again like the select cask unpeated I, I don't really think it needs a drop of water i love that sort of intensity on the finish that the the, the extra kind of uh, alcohol brings to the um, the finish. Pete has, has kind of dropped off a little bit now with uh, a little bit of water. Um, getting more barley. It's sort of reminding me more of the um, select car scum peated. Um, a little bit of biscuitiness. Um, more salt, like I said, sort of lighter but still you know still absolutely fabulous again lighter more citric um a little less peat but it's still really quite noticeable it's more dusty now i'm getting less of the Islery kind of peat notes and more of the mainland kind of peat character now that I put a drop of water with it and um, Still really salty A um, little bit longer um, But oh, it's damn good Right okay, so let's move on to the bowl. Let's see what the, the bowl gives us. I probably should have done this one at the end actually thinking about it, but Let's be, let's set, let, we'll, we'll do it now. I'm not going to bother mucking about with them again. Um, yeah, that is pungent. Uh, that is, um, that's quite ivory. That's, again, quite dark, quite malty, um, iodine, almost a touch of bog myrtle, um, coffee, dark chocolate, um, bit of barley, 
It's all, and again, I'm getting just that soupçon of, uh, of, of tropical fruit. So again, even though this is fairly heavily peated in relative terms, um, it's it's still giving me lots of character of the spirit. So, you know, it's really well balanced. Um, it's a bit of almost kind of over-stewed Assam tea uh, on, on the nose. It's got that sort of tea leafy kind of tannin kind of character um, which is obviously all to do with the peat and that's what I love about peat though, sort of the, the oodles of complexity within it it's not just sort of smoke and um, uh, and what have you it has you know a little bit more 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 character than, than that anyway yeah uh, oh just got a nice whiff of juicy orange then um, I mean, that is lovely. I mean, you know, the price of the bowl has gone up a little bit over the years, and I think it's, I can't think what it is now, it's probably in the 40s. Um, uh, but, you know, bloody good still. Anyway, palette. Peat takes a bit of a back seat to start off with, so I'm getting sort of you know, barley, slightly tropical fruit. Again, classic, the, the John Paul character. Um, Paul John character. <laughs> I remember we used to do that. When it first came out, I was forever going, it's John Paul, you know, <laughs> and, and Ringo. Um, but anyway, no, so the peat kind of comes through right on the mid palette and then sort of really lingers through. So again, it's, it's got that sort of dusty woody kind of peat but more of the, the sort of iodine and um, saltiness it really really is quite harmonious and um, again I'm getting that slight bamori kind of violetiness uh, which is really intriguing and um, that's just just such a lovely mouthful <laughs> Right, and finally we shall finish off with the single cask. So this is uh, well, the peated single cask, so this is 59.2%, so uh, this should be interesting. Really dusty, really peaty, um, but in that dusty peaty kind of character. Um, cinnamon, pepper, turmeric? Yeah, sort of turmeric. Um, Cedar wood, tar, iodine, a little bit of medicinal peat as well. Um, lovely saltiness. I mean, salt is kind of like almost kind of sticking to the inside of my nose. Um, it's got some nice maturity to it. It does feel, um, although again, I'm guessing this is probably closer to about sort of seven. Um, it's got a lovely sort of woodiness, uh, richness, and astringency. It's just, oh, that's intense. It's intense. Um, let's see what the, uh, the power's like. Mm. Again, Bamori Violets on the finish. Mm. Um, really astringent finish as well. It's like really salty. Saltiness of the peat, saltiness of the uh, of the spirit. Um, again, it's quite robust. It's quite malty. It's rich and broad. Um, wonderful, intense peat character. Um, dusty, a little bit of treacle. Um, a little bit of cinnamon. It's got a lovely spicy aftertaste. I also got quite a lot more oak character as well. So again, it kind of leads me to believe that the single cast bottling is probably um, more towards seven um, than it is anything else. And um, I'm getting that sort of rye-like character. But again, the sort of the balance is absolutely fantastic. Um, and um, I don't really, again, I don't really think it needs the water. Um, unlike the, um, the the single unpeated cask, 
Uh, so let's see what the nose is like now. Again, you know, it's just a little bit softer. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same as it is or as it was when it was neat. Um, still quite malty and peaty and um, damn good. Um, let's see what the power's like now. Lighter, brinier, a little bit more barley. Um, again, the peat is kind of right coming through in the middle, and it's got that sort of um, saline, iodine kind of character. Um, really salty um, and um, mm, it's like coffeeed. And again, the more violets. I mean, oh, what more do you want? I mean, that was, that's that's impressive. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, firstly, a big, big thank you to um, Shilton and to uh, Paul John for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, again, just a really big thank you for your support, and um, I will carry on sort of singing your praises as long as you're producing great whiskey, which they are indeed doing. Um, like I said, you know, no stinkers whatsoever, none whatsoever. You know, every time I've tasted Paul John's whiskey, it has been absolutely spot on, top quality. Um, love the brilliance. Brilliance, a bit richer and a bit bolder than, um, not bolder, that's the bold bottle. A bit richer, a bit more fuller than it used to be, but it, to me now, is kind of just absolutely what what Paul John is all about. It just is encapsulated in that particular bottling. Um, the classic cask, yeah, okay, you can argue that's maybe more the sort of style thereafter. Uh, it's got that lightness of touch with a, a little bit more citrus, and um, I have to say that, that, yes, I think of the two bottlings, I'd prefer that, but it's more expensive, you know, so... I still don't think you can go too far wrong with the uh, the brilliance. The single cask, um, interesting. Like I said, I think it is what it is. Uh, and I think this just goes to show that um, uh, although, again, the, the, it just goes to show that single casks are what they are at the end of the day. Just a single, a snapshot. Um, and in reality, when a uh, distiller is putting a, a batch bottling together, um, you kind of even out the sort of, I wouldn't say, not, not inconsistencies in, in, in this term, but you basically, you, you pick your spirits to sort of, you know, you, know you, you want a bit of oak, you want a bit more sort of, you know, spirit character, so you vat them together. And um, it's sometimes like some of the single bourbon, um, cask bourbon releases, you kind of just feel like you're, you're tasting a part uh, rather than anything else and I think with the the single unpeated uh, bottling that is exactly what you're doing it's a fascinating um, insight um, but I still I think the select cask is just just got a little bit more going on for it um, the the edited again a lovely bottling um, just the right amount of peat it's not overwhelming the spirit it's really really nicely balanced um, the select cask peated again I think is just just an absolute stunning whiskey um, but if you can't afford the uh, for that particular bottling then you have the edited so you're not losing out I mean the quality is still really really good um, the bold yeah that's exactly what it says on the tin it is bold um, lots of peak character um, and but you're still getting the character of the spirit. It is not one-dimensional. It's certainly not unbalanced. And but what it certainly is, is bloody good. And the, um, the the single peated cask, like I suppose the the single unpeated cask. Again, it's a snapshot, um, and it is quite woody. And like I said, I get the feeling it is probably closer to seven rather than than five. Um, and I think, I think maybe that worked a little better than the single unpeated cast, but again, it's just a really interesting insight into, you know, 
um, the, the casks that John Paul are, or Paul John, no, John Paul, Paul John are producing, and it, it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I know that there's, you know, very few of you are ever going to get the opportunity to sort of taste this entire range and sort of see these kind of nuances, and so you're kind of like having to take my word for it. But at the end of the day, you can buy any bottle at all of Paul John, and I'm. I don't know whether they do travel retail bottlings, but even if they do, I'm sure that they're not going to be dumping off their crap. Anyway, so um, until uh, until next week, all that's left to say is good afternoon and good rowing. <laughs>